alter ego. An alter ego is defined as an alternative self that's created by an individual or entity. The main purpose of an alter ego is to live out a better version of oneself. Alter egos provide a gateway to tap into another side of yourself and your personality, one that you may not know even existed before. This could unlock unknown creativity, fearlessness, and even power. Now, maybe no other alter ego stands out as much as Ziggy Stardust, a humanoid alien character created by the legendary rock icon David Bowie. Ziggy Stardust allowed Bowie to distance himself from the artist he was to the artist he wanted to be. It was a platform on which he thought glam rock could become without having to alienate any of his hardcore fans who were addicted to his original style. You see, by using Ziggy Stardust, Bowie could experiment with different sounds and styles and yet not be labeled a sellout. Now, the real true value of this alter ego Ziggy was that if Bowie did fail, well, he could just use the character as a scapegoat. Now, many other artists have done this too, like Garth Brooks with Chris Gaines or Lady Gaga with Joe Calderon, Prince with Camille, Bono with McFisto, and the list goes on. In fact, you're watching an alter ego right now, which is this channel, Bornagoon. I mean, most of you probably figured out my name is not Goon. By the way, it's Doug. And in my real life, I'm just this regular guy with a regular job. You probably wouldn't even think I owned a motorcycle. But when I put my helmet on, I transform into this Goon-like character. I feel like a superhero wearing a cape, and I become fearless and empowered when I'm riding a bike. It's like a lion that's being released from a cage and I'm taking all of these outside emotional influences that I'm going through in my life, whether it's anger, happiness, frustration, anxiety, and I'm channeling those emotions through the motorcycle. Now, right or wrong, that's just what a motorcycle does for me and all of us are different. So the channel itself becomes a way for me to explore that side and push my boundaries on a motorcycle while I'm entertaining you in the process. So you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with the Husqvarna Norden 901? Well, let me tell you. In 2013, KTM took control of Husqvarna motorcycles and in the process began to use the Husky brand as its alter ego. It was a way for KTM to experiment with different motorcycle aesthetics and styles while still remaining true to their ready to race roots and not veer too far off of what makes KTM a KTM. This turns out to be a sweet scenario for KTM because they become the main research and development brand and the product of this development creates KTM motorcycles first. Then KTM uses those tested and developed parts and shares them with Husqvarna and uses that brand as more of a premium marquee that uses the same foundation but with different aesthetics, sort of like balancing modern designs with a retro vibe. Since that time, KTM and Husqvarna have shared many engines, frames, and other components between the two brands on both dirt models and street models. Just to show you how similar they are, here is a product portfolio of each brand. Notice that they include practically the same models and look almost identical. So it's obvious at this point that the Husqvarna Norden 901 is the alter ego of the KTM 890 Adventure R. But the question is how close are they really? And what parts do they share? And is there really a difference between the two models? So let's take a look. Now, obviously I can't share every single detail about what is the same and what is different. But I do wanna take this moment to talk about the most important things that are similar between these two bikes that do make a difference and the things that are important that do not make a difference. So here's what they do share. They share the same engine, frame, forks, shocks, and rims. First is the rake and trail and the wheelbase. They're both smaller and shorter on the Husqvarna 901 than they are on the 890R. This should make the Husqvarna feel more flickable from side to side, but less stable at highway speeds. The ground clearance is slightly higher on the 890R over the Norden 901 and the tank size on the KTM is slightly larger. Now, I didn't put any of the exact specs, but mind you, they're very subtle in their nature. So I doubt the average rider is really going to be able to tell that much of a difference. What stands out to me is it appears as if the Norden 901 is carrying more mass on the top. The tank seems a little bit higher and the girth of the fairings seem a little bit larger. 
That may add some additional weight to the top and make the bike slightly more top heavy than the KTM 890R. But again, this is just speculation and I'm just looking at pictures and this could be completely inaccurate. I certainly wouldn't know unless I had the chance to ride one. Now here's a few other features that could sway your decision making if you're comparing the two models. The Norda 901 makes some of the features standard that are not standard on the 890R. Both of the models will have ABS and traction control systems as well as anti-wheelie control and a host of on and off-road riding modes. The 901 features an Explorer mode which is likely a carbon copy of KTM's Rally mode. But the 901 comes with an electronic quick shifter and cruise control. These are optional components on the KTMs, but standard on the Norden 901. According to Andreas Gulsdorf, the lead designer of the Husqvarna Norden 901 project, was quoted as saying this, We also selected a specific suspension spec, which mixes street comfort and off-road handling. In the end, its strength is long distance exploration, meaning range, comfort, and all-terrain versatility. So I guess the Norton 901 is an 890 Adventure R that's set up for touring. But isn't that what the 890 standard is for? So I guess that would mean that the Norton 901 is an 890 standard that has a better suspension system and higher ground clearance. But isn't that what the 890 Adventure R is? Or maybe the Norton 901 is an in-between version of two other in-between bikes. Yeah, that's it. Now as far as performance of this motorcycle, I would expect it to do well. Because it is based on a bike that's already doing well, which is the KTM 890R. Now as for comparing these two models together, it really comes down to a personal choice. There seems to be a broader range of riders that are digging this old world Royal Edenfield huge circular front headlight and the styling of the Husky over the mixed styling reviews from the KTM 890R. Compared to the competition such as the Yamaha Tenere 700, the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro, the BMW F850 GS, the Africa Twin, and the all new Aprilia Tareg 660 and Ducati Desert X, I'm sure the Husqvarna Nord 901 will do fine because then again, it's based on a winning platform and it will still come down to what you want to be seen on. I mean, what a time to be alive, right? So I guess in this case, the alter ego for KTM worked. You take a great bike like the 890 Adventure R, reskin it with a retro vibe, fancy up the TFT dash, slap on a Husqvarna sticker, and off you go. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I think the more choices we have, the better. And I think the bike looks sexy and I can't wait to ride it. But no matter how you slice it at the end of the day, the beautiful and capable Husqvarna Nord 901 is still a KTM 890 Adventure R. Just like Ziggy Stardust was always David Bowie.